การไปสไลด์
因为孩子的背部是有跟我们的意识有很大的关系，所以如果你们去背部的话，会看到那些东西，是对我们来说，那些东西是非常重要的。这个是一个背部，啊。嗯，嗯，这个是难怪，但为什么对我们来说这个是很重要的？我们 ，our Independence Day is January first, so every January first, everybody 每个人都会吃那个。为什么我们会吃？会想吃那个？是因为这个。表示我们的 independence， 因为我们还是法国的殖民地的时候，没有办法知道那个，因为只有那些 colonizers 才会是那个，所以因为我们已经独立了，所以每个一月一号我们会吃这个南瓜粉。不是，不是那个那种水果可以自己吃啊，要记住。就是左边是猪肉，可是跟台湾的猪肉不太一样。第二个原因是因为，啊、呃，你们知道，在二零一零年，我们的海底线有发生了一个很很大的地震，所以从那个时候之后，我不会非常想，为什么很多人死掉了？不是因为，主要的原因不是因为我们发生了地震，是因为我们的那些，怎么讲，就是。嗯，结构之类的 construction， 这是不够强，所以我觉得我们要在这方面，我们可能要就是发展，所以我自己会想来这边。嗯，那个时候发生地震的时候，很多人，这个造成很多人死掉了。应该二十万左右，对，还有我们的拍了些介绍了，跟很多很重要的地方，所以那个时候真的很严重。嗯，这个地震是哪一天？是 seven。Death tolls estimates range from 100,000 to about 100,000. Notable landmarks were significantly damaged or destroyed, including the presidential palace. And um, after the earthquake, I myself did some research, and I found out that our country has a long history with earthquakes, but not a lot of us were aware of that because um, they went to, some researchers came to my country after that, and they went to visit and do some research from like old documents. And they figure out we've had, um, earth, we've, been, we've been having earthquakes since before we began our independence. Like for example, we had an earthquake in um, 1751. It was very big, like, it's, it's you know, I did see, 一个岛，就是右边是多米尼加，左边是海底，我的国家
，就是整个岛都会发生地震。And then we had another one in 1770 at capital city Buenos Aires, Taizuka. And in 1842, it destroyed. Um, according to to um, a researcher, this earthquake only one house was left after it happened, so it was really big. The magnitude was 8.0. Yeah. And after that, there was another one um, in. <coughs> in Dominican Republic on the 4th of August, 1946. And then after that, there was a tsunami right after the, the earthquake. So we have a really long history with earthquakes. But unfortunately, not many of us were aware of that before we had um, the last earthquake in 2010. And um, how is civil engineering in Haiti? It's, um, <coughs> I personally think it's a field that we need to we need to um, develop a lot more because I mean we've been living in the island and it belongs to us. If you wanna protect ourselves, protect the future the future generations, we have to make sure that we can build solid structures that can withstand um, any future threat because. Um, there is a big fault. It's it's from California, and then it, it passes go. Um, it, it goes through um, the central part of California, and, and it goes all the way down to to Haiti, and then a part of it also goes to Dominican Republic. It's called Enriquillo, right at the PPT. Um, it's a big fault, so. Maybe right now it's not active, but any time we can become active again, and then we might face future um, earthquakes. So it's really important for us to make sure that we can build structures that can withstand um, earthquakes. Not just that, but this is something that is really important that we need to do. And it's um, the main university in my country is the National State. Um, Haiti University, and I didn't have time to go to this university because I came down right after I graduated from I graduated from high school. But um, we've had some programs where our students go, for example, to the United States or to Canada for some special for some specialization, just like Taiwan used to do um, 50 years ago or 40 years ago. A lot of people used to go to the United States to study, and then they come back to teach. Just something similar to that. And the the main field that we are trying to um, study is structural engineering with the University of Sher of Sherbrooke from Canada. And then there is also geotechnical engineering, and then geophysics with uh, Cornell University. Every year. Um, we sent the government sent some students, and then they go to study, and then they come back to become teachers, and they um, share what they've learned with the other people. And then, obviously, earthquake engineering. This is something that we need to do, and we need to improve as well. Um, how is my own experience in Taiwan as a international student. It's, um, it's very challenging. <laughs> it's very challenging, to be honest. The first reason, because um, we have no idea of what's going on in class. <laughs> Most of the time, we don't know what's going on in class. And I mean, some textbooks are in English, but if we could use the, text, the textbooks ourselves, we wouldn't need to go to a university. We could just study at home, and then we would just say we are um, engineers. Obviously, we need the help of the teacher and the guidance of the teacher, but most of the time, we don't understand. And we manage to pass sometimes, but we still don't feel like um, it could be better if we could 
you know, interact more with the teacher and understand what he's talking about sometimes. And for me personally, I wish sometimes we could learn by practice because I feel like in Taiwan it's a lot more theory than practice. And studying something like civil engineering, for example, is something that is very practical. Of course, you need a theory, but um, you also need to go to see um, how is it to be an engineer, or more precisely, how is it to be a civil engineer, and go visit some places, look at the structures, look at, um, like, just get to know your, your field of work. I mean, this isn't just my opinion, anyway. And just like I was mentioning, um, in Taiwan, I feel like the system is more like um, chalk and talk. Like the teacher comes, and then he writes on the board. Everybody gives silence. And then when the teacher asks me, you're me <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody usually I mean, asks questions. If anything, they ask, yeah. I mean, I don't know why it's like that, but it's more like chalk and talk. And I know we have to respect our teachers, but nobody dares to challenge the teacher or to ask very serious questions. Some people still do, but most of the time, students don't ask questions. I think this is not necessarily a good thing. Why? Because if I'm attending a class, and if someone asks a question, I can also benefit from what they ask. And this is something, I mean, if you are studying a new language or studying something that you just need to study by heart, it's fine, but I think for being an engineer, you need to understand what you're doing. Because if you are a mediocre engineer, then I don't think that's a good thing. And, but it's not only bad things. Um, Taiwan is a pretty safe country, and you don't get to worry about, um, you don't get to worry about your safety, and, you, and it's very convenient too, you know. And I believe the education system is also very cheap compared to other countries. Like, um, for, for example, in the United States, not everybody gets the chance or the privilege to attend university because it's it's a lot more complicated. And I wish I wish it was like a more fun engaging and experimental learning process for the foreign students. Because after I study here, I'm probably going to go back to my country and I'm going to have to tell other people what my experience was from Taiwan. And whatever that I have experienced here, I'm going to share it. Not only in Taiwan, because I, we don't know what the future holds. Maybe I'm going to go to other places and other people would like to know how is it to be a student in Taiwan? How is it to be a student in National Jingfeng University? And if it's something that I did not experience very well, it's not going to be a... Because I think Taiwan um, right now is trying to open up a little bit to internationals. And so our own experience, it's what we're going to share with other people. So, so if I would say what my... Um, perspective. I was studying civil engineering in Taiwan. I would say, yeah. I mean, our teachers are really um, competent. I mean, they know what they're doing, obviously. But um, I wish it could be more engaging and more social interactions between like the internationals and and the locals, because uh, I have that um, feeling sometimes that even if I stay here for 10, 15, or 20 years, I'm always going to be very distant from the locals. So I think, okay, if I'm studying, I should be having more interactions with other people. And because personally, I think being a university student, it's not just about um, learning what you're learning, your major. It's also about um, getting to know 
more people. It's also about um, networking, because maybe your next, I mean, someone who's sitting next to you in 10 or 15 years is going to be the next president of Taiwan, you don't know. <laughs> or maybe the national is going to go back to his country and he's going to have like a very important um, post in his country. And maybe you might need that person, you know, for some kind of trade or for some kind of business or whatever it is, or just friends, because everybody needs friends. But if you study in a place for four, five years, and you don't get to interact with other people, I don't think this is necessarily a good thing. And government send students to the country that are educated in English? Uh, because we have some specific relations with Taiwan. Uh, we also send, they also send people to other countries. So that was unfortunate not to come to Taiwan. <laughs> Korea, 
，没有办法去买。如果他要，嗯 ，send back， 就是 illegal， 他就可以这样子。如果他改那个，应该没有什么。这个算是一个文化上的问题，应该是说你们的文化比较保守，嗯，我们的文化可能比较开放，开放一点，可能是因为那边是首都，人比较，然后比较会，比如说出国看到外国人之类的，我不知道，这是我的印象。啊，用什么方法？我觉得。
。我觉得如果我们有机会是当朋友啊，有问题就可以直接问你。可是如果我完全是不会，是什么关系都没有，我可能想你，我不会直接去问你问题。非就是非常需要帮助的。那就先这样，那我们就先谢谢。